how are you? Today's video is going to be about getting your kids rats. And I'm writing it this way because as a parent, this is the kind of thing that I would consider when trying to decide what kinds of pets to get my children. And I thought it would be helpful for other people to see my thoughts on it after having had rats for multiple years now. I think we're at three and a half years, maybe four. I honestly don't know exactly. Math is not my strong suit. But with all that, we've had rats a while. We've had my children and they've interacted for a while. So I thought I'd give some of my thoughts on the concept. I have tried to film this video, no joke, three times already and had a problem every single time. So here's hoping that this fourth video will be fine and do the trick. Stay tuned. So the first thing I wanted to address is the best age to get rats. I feel like 10 is the best if your child is caring for the rats on their own, maybe even just a little older, because there's a lot that goes into taking care of them. And I feel like a smaller kid isn't gonna remember to do it enough, isn't gonna be able to do it well enough, or may not have the dexterity or capabilities to do it on their own. If you as the parent are going to assist them or train them in how to do it, and your kid is extremely capable. There are some younger children who are very responsible, but you're planning to supervise, then I would say under 10 is fine. However, like I said, that's gonna require you as the parent to help them, to train them, and possibly to do a lot of the work yourself. The, like I said, the reason being that the cages are gonna need cleaned weekly. This includes emptying it of all the bedding and taking out all the stuff changing things as necessary. It's gonna need deep cleaned at least every couple of weeks where you wipe down the entire inside of the cage, clean it really well. Twice a year at least, it's gonna need completely disassembled and deep cleaned, that sort of thing. And it's just a lot of work to do that. If you haven't seen any of my cage cleaning videos, I'm gonna put a link in the description, in the cards above my head. And I'll also try to put some of that on the screen for you to see because it is a lot of work and it can take a little while and most kids just don't have the attention span to do that on their own. Um, you're also gonna need to deal with daily food and water and making sure the water isn't malfunctioning, isn't dirty, um, is refreshed often enough, making sure that the rats have daily time out of the cage. I think the minimum I've seen recommended is somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. And you know, sometimes a little less is okay, sometimes more obviously is better, but they do need to come out of the cage to stretch their legs and get some stimulation. Um, then the other thing is, as the parent, it's gonna be up to you to do a health evaluation on the animals periodically and just make sure that they are healthy. I will have a video at some point I don't know before or after this one on how to tell if your rat is sick. I am planning to make that very soon, but at the time of filming this, I have not made it yet. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and then the other thing you need to consider is your child's responsibility level. Um, obviously there's some children who are very capable at a young age to take care of their own animals. And then there's some who maybe they just physically don't have the capabilities even though they have the desire. So that's something you'll need to think about when you evaluate your kids and your home environment, whether this is a good situation for you. You'll also need to consider if you are afraid of rats, as the parent, please do not bring rats into your home for their pet, full stop. If you're scared of them, this is not the right time to get them because at some point as the parent, you're going to have to step in. Maybe the rat decided to jump off your child's shoulder or has fallen out of their lap while sitting, or has just run off and you have to help catch them. These are all situations where you may have to intervene or the rat needs to go to the vet and the vet needs someone to restrain them and your kid can't do that on their own. You know, they just, hopefully the vet would be experienced enough to do that themselves, but just all the different reasons you might need to touch the rats yourself or handle them. And it's just not a good idea if you are personally afraid of them. If that is the case, please pick a different pet for your family. 
The next thing is the source of the rats is going to matter greatly. I do not recommend pet store rats, oops litters, or rescues for someone who's brand new to rats because often the rescue rats are rats from a pet store or an oops litter that may not be genetically friendly, they may not be genetically healthy, you don't know how long their lifespan is gonna be, you don't know what kind of health issues they may have down the line because you don't know anything about their genetics. You definitely don't wanna bring in a pet that has special needs as your first time pet, or a pet that's going to be skittish and afraid of your children as a first time pet, even if it's not fearful enough to bite. Um, you also don't wanna to have to deal with a potentially aggressive rat coming into your home and then making your children scared of the animal because that's just no fun. Instead, for a first time rat owner, I definitely 100% recommend going to an ethical breeder. And I will put a link in the description as well as in the cards on how to find an ethical breeder and what questions to ask. I made a long video on that and it's really helpful. It was the stuff that I wish I had been told when I was looking and I made the video after having several bad experiences and wanting to be able to help people make good choices. I also recommend watching my video about should you breed your rats even if you don't think that's something you have ever got interested in because that has kind of my backstory on poorly bred animals and animals with bad temperament and why I recommend breeder rats instead. That's the long version. Um, but the short version is that ethical breeders breed for good temperament first, which means the rat is going to want to have you interact with it quickly. The other thing they will breed for is health of the animal overall. Ethical breeders often evaluate their lines from birth to death and see what health issues run in that line and they'll be able to tell you that ahead of time. They'll tell you what you can expect, how frequently health issues pop up, and it's gonna be different for each line of rats that they have. So then you can ask questions and find out, well, are these health issues something that I can manage as a pet owner? Um, knowing when other things might pop up by age is also helpful. I'm gonna put some videos up in this section for you to see that shows my rats interacting with my kids. They're very cute, it's adorable, and personally I just think it shows what genetically well-tempered animals looks like. The next thing you're gonna need to keep in mind is vet costs. A lot of people think of rats, guinea pigs, hamsters, gerbils, those kind of pets as a starter or throwaway pet. And the truth is there is no such thing. These animals are exotic pets, and as such, if they get sick, they need a veterinarian who is trained on how to handle that problem. So in the instance of rats, the most common ailments are gonna be upper respiratory infections, tumors, external parasites, and abscesses. There's other things that can pop up, but those are the most common things I see over and over again in different groups. And they're all highly treatable, but you need to have a vet who's experienced, knows what medications to prescribe, knows if the rat is old enough for certain medications, and is willing to prescribe them for a long enough time period. At the very least, even with a healthy animal who never has to go to their bed, you are gonna need to take them in to be put to sleep at the end of their life at some point. So having a good vet and being prepared are really important. I highly recommend setting aside a vet fund Usually people do this by putting a little bit of money aside each pay period or each month. However, you can manage it to fit out of your budget towards the animal's vet bills in the future. That way it will help you when you do need to take them in. Um, so then the next thing we need to talk about is expectations versus reality. There's a lot of people who see all these really sweet videos like I'm going to throw up on the screen here while I'm talking of rats sitting in people's laps and being petted, doing tons of tricks, um, playing with their children, maybe playing with other animals. And the thing is that most of those things are not the reality of owning pet rats. While male rats are certainly more cuddly, that tends to happen as they get older, closer to a year in age. 
So if you're looking for a lap pet, this is probably not the best option for you because they are gonna be active and hyper for half of their life. And if you get female rats, they're gonna be that way their whole lives. Now there's some pros and cons to this. What we really enjoy is when we get new baby rats, they're so friendly and so playful and they just wanna be crazy and play all the time. My kids love that and they form a really good bond with the rats that way. And then as they get older, they wind up being more snuggly and by now they're bonded really well and the children can just cuddle them, carry them around, whatever. There's always exceptions. For example, I know for a fact Caramel knows how to spin. He's been great with trick training, the few things we've done. We had a rat previously who was really good at tricks and both of those were male rats, which are not typically what people choose for training, but any rat can learn some tricks at least. Okay. If you're looking for a lap pet, I would definitely recommend guinea pigs over rats because that's kind of what they do is you get them out and they just sit. Um, rats are also extremely social and you cannot get just one. And by cannot, I don't mean that it's not possible to go out and just get one rat. Obviously you can do that. However, no person on the internet who knows anything about rats and reads any animal studies is ever going to suggest that. Rats are extremely social. Studies show that they get depressed, they live shorter lifespans, and they have more health issues when they are alone. So please make sure you get at least two, and I would even recommend getting three. That way, if one passes away for some reason, you still have a friend for your other rat. And honestly, three rats is not that much different than two. Um, there's not a lot of training that you really have to do with rats. You don't have to litter train them. You don't have to teach them all kinds of tricks, but I would recommend, first of all, teaching them to come when called, whether the called means to their name, spoken verbally, to a sound, to the food bowl, some sort of a recall training. This is super important because I can't tell you how many times online I see people post that their rat has escaped, been let loose by accident, ran away because it got spooked, and now it's somewhere in their house and they don't know where it is. Well, if your rat is trained to come to something, this reduces the risk of you sitting there in anxiety and angst wondering where they are. Your rat will usually come out if you give it a little bit of time to calm down if it was spooked and then you do this thing and the rat will come to you, which is fabulous. Um, some other really simple tricks that I would think are fun and I would recommend anybody teach their rats or at least try is learning to spin in a circle and sitting up just because they're cute, it's fun, and it's not hard to do. So the last thing I want to talk about is the short lifespan and I feel like this is very very important to discuss. It's a definite con to having rats and that is the fact that they only live two and a half to three years on average. This is another reason I recommend going to a breeder because they can tell you if the line is going to be longer or shorter lived based on the lifespan of the rats that came before it. Um, they usually have a lot of health issues by the time they get close to two. If not, they will definitely start having them as they get older. Um, but with children, the hardest part I think is how hard it is to lose them. Some kids are obviously gonna be affected by this differently than others. But as a parent watching my kid go through the grief process and missing their friends and missing their little buddy and wishing they just had them back to snuggle, it's really hard. And so I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. On top of that, there is a sort of rat cycle where you get two or three rats, eventually you get down to one. Well, you can't have a lone rat, so you have to get more. And that can just be really hard mentally too. Eventually, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I don't wanna do this anymore. And if that's the case, then your choices are you really have to evaluate the rat's quality of life. If it's extremely old and getting towards the end, then you have to evaluate, first of all, is it worth it to keep the rat at all? And maybe it just needs put to sleep. If it's still got a quality of life, then keeping it and finding it a friend or rehoming it to someone who can give it more friends until it ends its life. With that said, I hope you find this video helpful. Hopefully my camera has recorded everything this time and didn't crap out on me. 
Hopefully the neighbor's vehicle is not too loud in the background. And hopefully you found something in this that helped you decide if rats are a good pet for your family. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, please let me know why in the comments below. I would be happy to discuss any of the topics in this video with you. You can always contact me on my social media accounts, which are linked in the description, and I'll put them up here on the screen. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you find out when I post more videos of our rats, DIYs, information, cage tours, or the miscellaneous mischief that we get up to. Thanks for watching. Bye.